Hey guys, what's going on today? Bojo here, and we are back with our NHL 15 via GM following the Vancouver Canucks as we are ready to start our year number six playoff run, I believe. So uh, we are going up against the LA Kings here in round number one. We did manage to finish above them in our division, so we will be having home ice advantage against the LA Kings in round number one. So let's do it we know what our team is looking like we're not going to be making any changes to it but let's just check out and see what the la kings have going for them in this uh playoff run so i believe we did play them last year i want to say yeah i'm pretty sure we played them last year and if not round number two uh, i actually do think we played them in round number two to be honest so uh it's gonna be a rematch this year but in round number one this time around but let's see what the la kings got going for them take a look at their forward course see how much it, it has Chain. So they still got Anze Kopitar, 92, Matt Zuccarello, 85, Tyler Toffoli, 87, Jeff Carter, 85. So he's starting to drop off a little bit. Mike Richards, 85, Tanner Pearson, 84, Dustin Brown, 77. He's really dropped off. Uh, Jake Marchment, 78, Dwight King, 83, uh, Daniel Duchesne is an 82 grinder. So he's a young prospect. Kyle Clifford, 81, Francis Brunel, another grinder, 77. And that's their forward course. So once again, they got the veterans like Brown, Richards, and Carter, who are all 36. So this Kings team is probably not going to be good after this year. I would assume these guys will be retiring fairly soon. Uh, Zuccarello is up there in age as well. Kopitar is still like 33. But you got guys like Toffoli. Even Toffoli and uh, Pearson are getting up there in age, like 28 for both of those guys. So you got a nice little group of like grinders. But other than that, I think this might be the last hoorah for the LA Kings offensive-wise. Defensively, uh, Drew Doughty, yep, uh, 90, at a 91. Slava Voinov, 86. Vince Dunn's up there at 88. Jake Muzzin, 83. Adam McQuaid, 80. And then Josh Carrick, 79. And then goaltenders, uh, Martin Jones, the newest uh, the newest Boston Bruin. And Jonathan Quick, 91. All right, so once again, it looks exactly like the exact same team we played last year. So... We know what the LA Kings are all about. We know what this Vancouver Canucks team is all about. I just want to exit out of here because I forgot to do something. I need to go to La Settings and make sure that I turn auto rotate goalies off. Because I don't want my backups going in there. Even though if you know if Pol uh, Polivka screws up, I do want Dubo to play in there. But let me just make sure that Polivka is getting the start as he is not because Dubo is currently starting. So what we want to do is go all the way to the goaltenders. Let's make Patrick Polivka our starter. There he is. He's going to be the starter for game number one. And let's get ready to rock. So here we go. Game number one against the LA Kings here in round number one. We have home ice advantage. Like I said, their team is good. Uh, you know, I we beat them last year. Took to seven games or six games, I believe. So let's see if we can uh, deal with them a little bit more easily here. But remember, if Polivka starts to slip up, I will not... I will not hesitate to put Alex Dubow in there for a game or two. But here we go. Game one against the LA Kings at home. And we lose three to nothing. So I'm not going to blame him there. That's our offense's fault. No offense to show for there. Game number two. Let's see if anything changes. Game number two against the LA Kings. And we three to two loss. Uh, do I want to put Dubow in there? He's given up three goals past two games. Now let's try it out. I have to try it out, man. I think Polivka is just having such an awkward year. I would have given him a start. I would have let him go to the next game if it was like 2-1 to one or something like that. If it was a 2 to nothing loss. But uh, right now, that's not working out. So Alex Dubel, get in there for game number 3. We're down 2 to nothing. We are down 2 to nothing in this series so far. And I cannot let, uh, you know, I can't let that go to waste. We got to come back. See if we can win a game here in the Staples Center. I'm not going to change the offense because we came back and scored two goals. At least, you know, LA Kings are a tough defensive team. But let's see if we can get a couple here past Jonathan Quick. There you go. 4-3 to three win. Alex Dubow gets himself a win. So, obviously, we're going to keep him in there. 4-3. to three. All right. Come on. So, it's a 2-1 to one series lead. Let's tie this thing up back. Tie this thing back up going home. Tied at 2. I would like that. And game number 4. Alex Dubow gets a shutout in game number four, two to nothing win. So there you go. Alex Dubow comes in after Patrick Polive has a bad first two starts, and he steals game three and four on it. Well, he steals game four to tie this series back up at two. So all right, come on, Alex, keep running with you. Game number five at home again. 
Come on. And an overtime loss. Not good. Three to two. All right. We're in the Staples Center here. Dubo, he's won the first two in Staples Center. Can he get me get me a win here in game number six to go to game number seven? There you go. Another two to nothing win for Alex Dubo. So it's going to be another game seven where we go up against the LA Kings here for the second straight year in a row. All right, Alex, let's go. You got yourself two shutouts here in LA. We haven't won a home game at all, but there he comes. He comes in clutch. He comes in clutch in game number seven to win it two to one in game number seven and we finally win the home game so out of all the home games here we lost the first three we won every game in los angeles but then we walk away with a two to one win in game number four so alex dubo look at that three goals led up by patrick polivka in the first two games and then he lets up three in game three he gets himself a shutout in game four three to two in overtime so he only let up two in regulation which isn't good he got a shutout in game number six and then a two to one win in game number seven so there you go alex dubo Looking like he possibly could be the guy here in uh, this possible playoff run. But we're going up against the Edmonton Oilers in round number two. So that's uh, not looking forward to that as they have had our number all season long. But let's take a look at the player stats for these for this first round. And let's see how it is going to turn out for us. So go for the forwards. Check out the stats. So Johnny Goudreau. Seven points in seven games for him. Mikhail Grigorenko, seven points in seven games for him. Alex Galchenyuk had five and seven. Bo Horvat, I don't know. He might have another little playoff run in him. He had a couple points last year, so four points for him. Hunter Schenkerk had three. Ryan Strom, three. Barzell with two. Adrian Kempe with one. Chad Roloff with one as well. He got himself a goal. Linda Vey with one. Brendan Gauntz and Glenn Plutoni with no points. Uh, defenseman, we got Dougie Hamilton with two. Fowler, Helmanen, and Nordland all have one each. Hogman and Tanev do not have any. And then goaltenders, as you guys can see, Patrick Polivia, two games played, a 4.57 goals against average, 0 and 2. But then Alex Dubo comes in there and gets himself four wins. Four, oh, he didn't have a regulation loss, did he? No, he went 4 0 oh, and uh, 4 0 oh, and 1. So there you go, with a 1.1 goals against average, 4-0-1, like I said, save percentage of .959, and two shutouts. So, Alex Dubo, you're the hotter goaltender. Let's go with you this year. Why not? So, uh, yeah, let's check out the playoff tree. And it's, it's happened in the West. So, Colorado beat Nashville in five. Arizona beat Winnipeg in six. Uh, we beat the LA Kings in seven. And Edmonton beat the San Jose Sharks in seven. And then in the East, we got the New York Islanders beating Pittsburgh in seven, Washington sweeping Florida, Toronto beating the Red Wings in five, and Buffalo upsetting, possibly upsetting the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in six games. So here are our Elite Eight. We got Colorado versus Arizona, Edmonton versus Vancouver, Washington versus the New York Islanders, and Toronto versus Buffalo. So uh, once again, we'll be right back. We'll check out the Oilers stats uh, in just a minute. All right, guys, so here we are at the Edmonton Oilers as I am looking up their playoff stats. And let's check out what this team has going for them this year. So they still got Taylor Hall, 90 overall. Uh, Jordan Eberle, 86. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 93. That's pretty good for him. Leon Dreisaitl, 84. So he is playing for them now. Uh, David Perron, 86. Nail Yakupov, 86. Andrei Lakhtyanov, 82. Uh, Ethan Price, 84 overall sniper. Let's take a look at this guy, what his stats are. Uh, okay, he's got the hardest shot you can have. No, Not very good defensively at all, so... Uh, we got Ruslan Radulov, another sniper, it seems. He's got definitely better defensive stats. He was a 20th overall pick in 2015. Uh, Benoit Puglia, 83. Michael Zawiski. Oh, Jesus. Okay. We remember him. Michael Zawiski. Uh, Ilya Zinoviev. Zinoviev. Okay, so he was in the uh, 2016 draft, 41st overall. And that's it. So they got a lot of snipers, like sniper, two-way forward, sniper, 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 playmaker, sniper, two-way forward, two-way forward, playmaker, sniper, sniper. A lot of snipers on this Edmonton Oilers offense, that's for sure. So it looks like they can score themselves some goals. It's a little bit worrisome. Uh, defensively, we got Martin Marinson, 85, Oscar Kleffbaum, 84, Justin Schultz, 85, Nikita Nikitin, 81, Darnell Nurse, 83, and Jeff Petrie, 83. So... Nothing really too scary about their defense. Martin Marinson's their best defenseman at 85 overall. Other than that, just a lot of 80. Uh, well, actually, Justin Schultz and Martin Marinson are both 85, but they're the top two, 285s. 
when we have a guy like uh, Yoko Norland, 92. So, uh, other than that, their defense is kind of, it's mediocre. It's average, like 83s, 81s, 85s, around that range. So, nothing really too scary about their defense then. In goaltending, they got Ben Scrivens, who is at 83 overall. So, they don't have a good goaltender. They don't have a very good offense, but they're uh, a uh, not offense. They do have a good offense, but their defense is not good. So defense and goaltending is not their strong suit. Edmonton looks like a team that was probably going to give up a lot of goals, but you know they are a team that can score a lot of goals as well. And uh, they're the only team who have really bested us the entire regular season. So they're going to have home ice advantage in the series as well as we're going to go to Hexall, Hexall Place, but uh, Rexall Place, not Hexall Place. Sorry, I got the draft on my mind still. So uh, we're going to run with Dubo. We saw clearly that Alex Dubow was the guy to run with here. So let's see if Alex Dubow can solve this issue that the Edmonton Oilers were having on us in the regular season. So like I said, we got to the second round here. I'm not going to be too upset if we lose once again. But, you know, we kind of want to make it a, a uh, make it interesting, see if we can go after that cup once again. So here we go. We'll start off game number one against the Edmonton Oilers. Alex Dubow is in the net. Let's see if he can hold the Edmonton Oilers offense at bay and a 3-2 loss in game number one. So not terrible. All right, so let's go. Game number two. Let's see if we can rebound here. See if we can rebound against the Oilers. Game number two. Don't worry about it. Wash it off. Uh, three to one win. There you go, Dubo. Comes back. Solid. We get some get some goals. Almost the same as the first game. A three to one win. Not bad. All right, so we split that series in Edmonton, which is good as we're going back to Vancouver here for games three and four. So hopefully, let's see if we can have a better uh, time here at home than we had in the LA Kings series. We have four games at home. And uh, unfortunately, we lost all. We lost three out of the four. So let's see if we can hopefully pick up this uh, winning streak at home. And we lose four to one at home. So we've only won one game at home so far in this playoffs here. All right, Alex. If you have another bad game like that, I might have to go back to Polivka. To be honest, four goals. I don't know. Come on, show up in game number four, boys. Uh, three to one loss. All right, now our offense is going cold, and our goaltending is not really. Up to snuff. So what we're gonna do is make some line changes here. All right, Alex. I know you were doing good in that LA Kings series, but you're starting to really flub it right now. So you know, we're just gonna change the goalies. Patrick Polivka, get yourself in there. You want to make that contract money. You want to get that extension. You're gonna have to prove it here. Uh, but we're gonna go with Barzell up here. Johnny Goudreau is gonna go down there. Uh, Linden Vey, you're gonna go up with. Here to get another playmaker on that line with Horvat and Schinkerg roll off. You're going to go down to the fourth. Defensively, uh, yeah, I guess that's all from. I'm going to leave defensively. That's it. So I'm just going to switch Goudreau down. Barzell's going to go back up. And Polivka's going to get the start for game number five, I believe. So, man, home home has not been our strong suit in this playoffs, man. 4-1 to one and 3-1. to one. Edmonton's offense might just be a little bit too much for us here to handle. So we'll see what happens here. Game number five in Edmonton. Come on, and Patrick Polivka. Wipe away the bad starts, two starts that he had against the LA Kings here in game number five. Uh, it's taking a long time to simulate. Nope, I don't think so. Ooh, it, did, it took a long time to simulate, but Patrick Polivka goes in there, wipes away those first two games they had in LA, walks away with a 2-1 to one win in game number five. So it's a 3-2 to two series now. Coming back home again. Guys, we've won one game at home so far out of six games. This is going to be our seventh home game right now. We're, we're one in five at home this year. Can we please get ourselves a win here and push game number seven in Edmonton? Let's go. Uh, are we going to get it? Yeah, there you go. A six to three win at home again. All right. Not bad. So Patrick Polivka goes in there, wins two. He's pulling himself and Alex Dubow as we force a game seven in Edmonton. Patrick Polivka, you know, uh, scouting Simon. I'm gonna, I'll worry about that later. But here we go. Game seven in Edmonton. We've walked to it. We fought back in the series to tie it up at three. We've won in Edmonton. We won at home finally. But here we go in Edmonton again. Can we force? Can we go on to the third round possibly? Can we move on to the Western Conference Finals? Uh, oh, two to one loss. Man, oh man. That's unfortunate. Yeah, man, I, those t the games three and four were the backbreaker there. Games three and four were really bad there. No, I'm not going to blame Polifka on that game at all. He definitely played well in game number five. And game number six, our offense came to play. But then both teams kind of, you know, buckled down, I guess. I'm not going to blame Polifka for it. It's a two-to-one loss. Games three and four were too much, man. The fact that we went two and only one. Why did we go? Two and... Five, I think 
right? There's one win there. And one win there, and I said we had seven home games. Yeah, the fact that we went two and five at home in the playoffs so far for the first two rounds is pretty pathetic, to be honest. Two game sevens, and we went two and five at home. That's not, it's not good at all, unfortunately. So we're gonna get kicked out in the second round. Edmonton's gonna be moving on. Uh, let's check out our player stats for that playoff run. Very short playoff run, unfortunately, but that's how it's gonna have to happen sometimes. All right. That's unfortunate. That sucks. All right, let's check out the player stats. Who can we blame here? I mean, if Putondi didn't have any points, I mean, I, I'm sure I could blame him. But Grigorenko had a very good series, that series once again. Uh, 15 points for him. Looks like he was going to have a monster playoff run. Johnny Goudreau got moved down to the second line, still put up points. Uh, Alex got Chinook with 12. Horvat had 6. Shinkrook. Second line really didn't pull their weight. Ryan Strom, uh, Glenn Putolny, and uh, Matthew Barzell really didn't pull their weight. Three points for Barzell only. That's pretty pathetic. Roloff had another goal there. Ve, yep, Kempe. Putolny with zero points. That is not what I wanted to see from him from our power forward. Zero points for Glenn Putolny. Not that great at all. All right, defenseman Hamilton at six. Fowler, five. Hellman at three. Nordland, two. Hogmoon with one. And then Tana with nothing. Then the goaltenders, uh, Polivka, you know, you got yourself, you kind of, you know, you grouped yourself back together, not going to lie, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to blame you for that loss is there, but Dubo, solid, 10 games played, 1.6 goals against average, went 5-3, and three, but he just couldn't hold his own in the last two games, he went back to Polivka, he got himself two wins, but unfortunately could not hold it together. So that's unfortunate how it's going to have to happen here. Uh, Edmonton is now the playoff favorite, as it seems, as they're going to take on Arizona. Toronto's going to take on the New York Islanders. So if we lose to Edmonton, I'll feel a little bit better. Now we'll simulate all the way past this playoff run here, and we'll see what actually happens. But going into the draft of this year, um, you know, I'm not really sure what we can do here. We need to re-sign Patrick Polivka, so... That's going to take up a lot of our cap room, and I don't know if there's going to be anything that we need to do here. We're going to have to evaluate the team and see if there's going to be some players that we need to unload cap-wise. Because, you know, I think three of our defensemen, I think Fowler, or maybe it's not Fowler, but I think it's Hamilton, Tanev, and somebody else. Maybe it's uh, Nor no, it's not Norgenland because we signed him out last year. All right, I'll do this damn scouting assignment. But I know I think three of our defensemen need to be re-signed this year, and I think we're going to have to let some of them go. Uh, we can't trade them, obviously, because they need to be signed. We can't make any deals at the draft to get some prospects. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what we can do here. Let's see out the uh, QMJHL forwards the rest here so we'll do the playoff tree we'll see we'll take a look at the awards and stuff like that and then we'll do like a whole team recap before the draft starts so you guys can give me some just some suggestions and then we'll obviously uh, take it from there all right so let's go to june uh whoops don't want to go that far let's just go a uh let's go two days or so before the draft Two days or so before the draft, and we'll see what happens here. Get the uh, Stanley Cup update, hopefully. Finals are still going on. 7-7, seven and seven, man. That sucks. We went 5-2 and two on the road, 2-5 and five at home. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are your Stanley Cup champions in year number 6. So Toronto Maple Leafs are the Stanley Cup champions in year number 6. Very interesting. They had a good year. I think they were one of the top teams, to be honest. I forget, maybe not, I don't know, I don't remember looking at their seed, but we'll see what the uh, playoff tree looked like here. Let's take a look at the awards as well. All right, so let's look at the playoff tree. Was it Toronto versus Edmonton? It was Toronto versus Edmonton, it went to seven. So uh, Edmonton, you know, they, uh, they put up a fight there, I'm not gonna lie, they beat Arizona. So we did lose to the top team in the Western Conference, so I'm not gonna complain about that. Edmonton had, Edmonton went to four straight game seven, so all their games went to seven games. They couldn't really close out a series, I guess you could say, but there it goes, that's how, uh, that's how it happened. So we lost to the best team in the Western Conference, I'm not gonna complain. So Stanley Cup champions goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They won the year before, they won the year before us, so they've won two times in three years. So Toronto is actually a pretty good team in this uh, GM by this time, year number six. So Winnipeg won the presidents and they were kicked out round number one. Clarence S. Campbell, Edmonton, Toronto. All right, and then we get to the player awards here. Art Ross, Steven Stamkos, Hart Memorial goes to Nazim Kadri. Josh Morrissey wins the James Norris. Lady Bing goes to Phil Kessel. Calder goes to Jay Fritch Fritschit. 
uh, frit shit. Yeah, that's what it says. Furt she. Furt she. I don't know. I'm not going to try that. Consmite Jonathan Bernier again for the uh, second year or the second time in three years. Went the last time they won the club. Vesna went to Andre Pavlik. Uh, William and Jennings goes to Patrick Polivka. Fewest goals against. Average scored against a minimum 25 games played. Oh, Patrick Polivka and Alex Dubow. Okay, I forgot. It's a uh, group effort. So there's that. Luke Shen wins the Bill Master 10. Frank J. Selke, Claude Giroux, Ted Lindsay, Nazim Kadri, and Maurice Richard, Phil Kessel. So that's probably why. Phil, the thrill, putting in some goals. All right, so there's the awards. And uh, that's how our Canucks team sits. So, uh, next episode, obviously, we will take a look at the team. We'll see who needs to be re-signed next year. And we'll look at the possible trades that can be made going into the draft this year. Because out of I uh, scouted players, a lot of top 10 picks this year are defensemen. So, I would not be against picking up some more defensemen for our team. But I think it might be time to possibly let some players go. Because I think we are going to need some cap room here. And we do need to re-sign some players as well. So we'll take a look at that whole situation next time. But uh, unfortunately, we got kicked out by the best team in the Western Conference in round number two. But we'll see if we can be back next year. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe as always. And we'll see you next time.